The crowded but static GOP presidential primary has dominated national attention this summer. But on the Democratic side, President Biden has largely avoided any serious primary challengers. The president has served in federal government for more than 40 years. And while the majority of his party is behind him, some are calling for a change. White House correspondent Laura Barone Lopez has more. Dean Phillips is a third-term Democratic congressman from Minnesota, and he thinks President Biden should not seek re-election. Phillips wants the president to pass the torch, but so far, none of the big names in his party want to pick it up. Congressman Phillips joins me now. Congressman, thank you so much for joining the News Hour. President Biden is the oldest sitting president in history, uh, but you've said this isn't about age. So what is this about? Well, and let me start by complimenting him. I, I think President Biden is a remarkable man, a man who saved our country, certainly the best man for the job in the last four years, a man I honor, a man of integrity and competency and decency. And that's not the issue. Uh, you know, Laura, I, I come from the private sector. Uh, I use data to, to drive decisions. I use listening to inform my decisions. And then I use instinct uh, to help make those decisions. So as I look at the data, as I listen, I believe I'm simply giving voice to what an overwhelming majority of the country feels right now. It's not about the past. Uh, his policies extraordinary, by the way. I voted for every one of them, and I helped market them. I believe in him. But I also believe in what I read, what I see, and what I'm feeling. And my job is to represent. And I believe that Democrats should have a thoughtful conversation now, before the primaries really begin. We already have a competitive primary, Robert F. Kennedy and Marianne Williamson in the race already. We already have Cornell West running as a third-party candidate. I simply want to see Cornell West enter the primary. If Joe Manchin wants to run, enter the primary. I believe Democrats do better when we have choices, freedom to choose. And the data right now is making me very concerned. And Laura, I'll just wrap with this. I woke up the morning after the 2016 election. I was living a wonderful life. Uh, my daughters, uh, 16 and 18 at that time, woke up the next morning and were in tears. I saw fear in their eyes for the first time. I promised them I would do something, and I ran for Congress. Co Congress Five years later, I'm not going to sit still and be quiet while we have that risk of him coming back, and I want to make sure that we're best prepared with the best candidates to take on. Congressman, Donald on that Trump. note, though, uh, your fellow Democrats have argued that your efforts to uh, seek out a primary challenger for against President Biden could actually weaken his reelection bid and could very well put the former President Trump back in the White House. So what do you say to their concerns well, about that? Well, I think that's just patently untrue. And I, I first of all, my call is for the president to pass the torch. Uh, I, I think that would be in the country's best interest and certainly Democrats. We have an extraordinary bench of Democrats ready to go, prepared, proximate, well-positioned, but we'll never know that. And I don't want to wait five years. Many people are telling me that, and the data is also. And, and I understand we, we are people of different perspectives, uh, uh, sometimes different motives. Uh, mine is very pure in this. This is not about me. It's not and about me running for president. It is about me trying to elevate a conversation that right now is surprising that nobody wants to have. And I do not want a repeat of 2016 when we essentially anointed someone. It was her turn. And lo and behold, look what happened. I think we're sleepwalking into the very same mistake again. And the time to have the conversation, Laura, is right now. Congressman, some of your own uh, Minnesota Democrats, like your own governor, Tim Walls, has said that you should stay in your own lane. Uh, Ken Martin, the chair of your d state's Democratic Party, has called this effort disappointing and that you're repeating baseless Republican talking points. Have you talked to voters in your state, but also battleground states, about this push? Yes, and I'm so glad you bring that up. Bat let's talk about battleground states. I don't care about the national data. Joe Biden won by 7 million votes nationally last time. I, he'll probably, he would do so again. I'm worried about the five or six swing states, uh, the battlegrounds that are the most consequential. That's why I've called for some of the moderate governors, people representing those very states that have great organization, uh, great influence, and great capability to consider entering as alternatives, because they can perform well. Yes, voters, to answer your question very directly, people all around the country are reaching out to me. And let me assure you, if they're reaching out to me, they're reaching out to every single one of my colleagues asking for the same thing. They want choices. Those... Uh, the data is really clear. 
Those it's moderate, not very promising. Those moderate I'm governors trying to do that now, right, Congressman? Those moderate governors, though, that, that you've mentioned, whether it's Gretchen Whitmer uh, of Michigan, mm -hmm. even Tim Walz of Minnesota, have said that they aren't sure. interested in running against a former president, and they support him. Uh, the president actually in 2020 outperformed you in your own district by roughly three points. Mm -hmm. And you've said you're considering challenging him yourself if no one else steps up. So what would your strategy be to beat him? It's not about me. And I, I don't anticipate doing that because I believe there are people, as you just referenced, this is not, this, I'm not, I'm not well positioned for this. I am well positioned as the only voice calling attention to something that we should be talking about. Think about Governor Whitmer and Senator Warnock from Michigan and Georgia, a pastor from the South, a man of color, a woman at the top of the ticket in a year in which reproductive rights will probably be front and center more than any other policy issue. Uh, and their next generation exciting candidates that could activate, energize the Democratic base and get us excited. You know, I, I'm looking at this as hopeful, optimistic, exciting. And I'm afraid that we are sleepwalking into the very circumstance of 2016. This is not about me. I'm using this 15 minutes. I'm using this opportunity with you tonight to simply ask people to give it a little thought. Look at the numbers. Don't listen to me. Look at the numbers. Talk to friends. Mm -hmm. Are other people feeling the same? That's what I'm trying to do. I wish this would not be about me. I'm trying to do a service to Democrats, but most importantly, to a country that really, really needs it. Congressman Dean Phillips of Minnesota, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.